Alright guys, so today I'm going to put the Ultra HDMI into my N64. I got it from GameTech, who is on YouTube. I will post a link in the description below. Um, it's a pretty expensive mod, and he highly recommends you do not do it yourself, as this is the ribbon cable that you connect into the... Um, I'm going to call it a GPU, it might still be called the PPU in the N64, I don't know for certain, um, but you got to mod that onto the main board in the uh, N64. Um, Alright, so the printer is finishing out the last of the installation guide. I think all that's left is um, using and setting when it's running. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the actual mod. This is the Ultra HDMI board. It's actually got some unpopulated areas, so I'm wondering if he might be intending to add... That looks like Ethernet to me. At least the potential to be Ethernet, I should say. I'm not 100% sure why, it's probably firmware updates, but while the printer's finishing, I figured I could go ahead and start working on this. Um, I don't know. Whoops! I just to come out. This is the LED light guide on the front. I didn't realize it was loose. I went ahead and pulled out. Crap! Pulled out this little screw hold for the expansion port because on the bottom here, out of frame, here, so that I could work on the board a little bit easier. I gotta do a case mod before I start installing it as obviously the N64 is not built for an HDMI port. And unfortunately, Retroactive decided to use a mini HDMI. Luckily I have a few cables lying around, but not everyone will. Um, I think GameTech intends to supply one with the mods he does. I went with the DIY option as I know what I'm doing. Um, and this way there's only one guy to blame if it's screwed up. So the first step is to mark out where the HDMI port goes. And in the instructions that Retroactive supplied, he states there is no strain relief for the HDMI port, which means you need to be very careful when you cut this slot. If you don't, then the HDMI port has only the actual physical connections which are the electrical connections here which are very weak and then where it goes through the board it's out of frame which you guys probably aren't going to be able to see um, it, that's not a whole lot of mechanical hold especially since he did a really crappy job of soldering those um, the four side port points he's barely got any solder in the whole four um, but I'm going to be very careful doing this. And this video is going to be a heck of a lot of fast forward with hopefully some decent music. But if it isn't, I apologize. Um, here we go. He also says use an exacto knife, not a pocket knife. I don't have one at home. What Retroactive didn't tell me, or doesn't have written down, is how deep you actually need to cut. Um, and with the way it's made, looks like I need to cut deeper, which is good, because I cut a little wag wiggy. I'm hoping you guys can see that. That's, there you go. It's not much, but you need to be very careful, which I'm using a pocket knife. It's a very sharp pocket knife, but it's a pocket knife. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this again or not. For whoops, I kind of hope I can. 
but I'm not truly expecting it to be able to be used again. Um, so I was just kind of looking to see if it would still fit. So I'm truly not sure how far I'm supposed to go down. Let's try the other way. Oh. oh good lord. Okay. Oh, right. EMI shield. That's what it is. Piss. Piece of junk. Okay, that looks like it fits. So, I want to call that done. Mostly square, too. Close enough. Um, in the instructions, he says to cut off the swarf because he said to use a file, as he also says to use a Dremel. I'm obviously not using a Dremel, I'm using a pocket knife. So this swarf never really appeared because I'm not grinding, I'm actually cutting. Um, next page. Oh, You guys didn't see it off frame, but the instruction manual just fell off the back side of the table. I'm done with this, get out of the way. On to the fun part. And by fun, I mean but puckering scary part, as this is a lot of money on a retro console. If I screw up, something's royally screwed. That's the part where I really like that peanut gallery. But he is otherwise occupied, I believe. As he has not responded yet. So... You guys are probably going to have this... You know what, actually? I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Flip over to the phone so I can control it without having to get up. So be right back. Alright, so I hope I'm back. Yep, there we go. I've now got control with the phone. So Zoom's going to take a little bit. I'm going to try and clean it up in post processing. And if I get this thing posted up anytime in the next couple of days, happy 4th of July. Um, if you're in the U.S., and it is literally Canada Day right now from what I've read. Um, so let's get going. Okay, so I've got to solder to the RCP. just realized you guys can actually see my finger on the instructions. Um, this is going to be fun. Alright, one, two, three, four, five... I really need to figure out the speed of that zoom. Get my hand out of the way, I can actually see the screen. There we go. I'm going to try to show you guys what I'm doing, but I may not be able to keep that view. This is like working in a mirror, by the way. So, if you see me moving the board around in crazy directions, it's trying to figure out which way is actually the right way to be going. Oh, this is going to suck. Alright, over there. Turn that on. Oh, okay, that is... The contacts are exposed on both sides. What I was just looking at was on the end of this ribbon cable, I thought that the contacts were only solderable on one side. I just took a second look and realized that it is, I can get it out of it from both sides, which is very good. Um, what's going to be really hard is getting this lined up and stable enough I can get it soldered. Because the other thing is, these ribbon cables do not like heat. So if it takes me more than a second or two to solder a contact, it's probably going to melt. Now, the other thing is, if you notice, my... RCP, CPU, I hope, and the two RAM modules have Noctua thermal paste on there. I was in this thing right after I got it about two years ago. Cleaned it up, um, put a little bit of thermal paste on it, and 
just gave you kind of a once over to see if there's anything obviously screwed. There wasn't, and it worked pretty well, but I saw the old change to my mod, it looked like it ran better, and it was a better picture, as well as modern TVs, they like HDMI better. Um, so I looked into the mod. My big thumb is blocking everything. Oh, this way. Alright. So what I've got to do is completely out of frame. I've got to get the first pin of this ribbon cable, or well, the first in the actual grouping, lined up on the sixth pin of the RCP, which I think I've got. Great news, because this is really getting me annoyed. Let's get back in frame. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Actually, no. I'm going to change the camera positioning. Get you guys a look down angle. Right now, I've got the camera on the other side of the table at about a 40 degree down angle. So, I'll be back in a couple minutes again. Alright, so new angle. Haven't tried this one before. I'm going to admit it's already kind of annoying me. Um, what I've got now is the camera is directly overhead and completely out of focus. Chances is going to work. Nope. Okay, so my camera apparently does not like close ups. Alright. I'm hoping it'll. Crap. I'm hoping it'll be much easier to see since I'm recording in 4K right now. I hope. Um, on a larger screen. This, where is it? That's kind of cool. That's what I'm seeing. As the on-screen, or the on-camera display is disabled. It's a black screen and it just says controlling with smartphone. It's a nice feature, but they didn't do it quite the way I'd like them to have. So now let's get this line back up. That, yep, that's where it needs to be. Ah, fudge. This VDC NUS right here is really annoying me. It'd be really nice if it wasn't right there. I wonder if that's what's screwed up on my buddies. One of my friends has an N64, which he's had forever, and due to, he says, hey, you Pikachu, it only displays black and white now. We tried a couple different games, we've tried a number of things. I'm reasonably certain it is a hardware failure, which is really unfortunate. Um, I don't know enough about an N64 to fix his hardware death. Oh, crap. And my side cable oops, is constrained by my phone. Alright, what I'm going to try to do here you just get a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron. I hit the tip. Really? I apologize if I just gave anybody motion sickness. I got two pins attached, so the cable is now stable enough to work with. Um, what I'm going to have to do, do is just go through here and solder all of them. I don't know if you guys can be able to see it, but on pin 7, I've got a little too much solder. That is the biggest problem with SMD soldering is the wrong amount. Not enough, it's a crappy connection. Too much, it's a very high chance you're going to bleed over to another connection. Um, it's one reason why I really do actually like having wick around. It's not my go-to for most desoldering operations, but it is critical for many things. I might have to go get mine out of my car. 
and you guys will probably mostly see my head from here on out. All right, so it looks like I got all the RC RCP joints done. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, the documentation on the next picture. Yeah, it looks like right here on the flex cable there is either a very small SMD capacitor or resistor probably 0806 size. I don't remember if that's metric or standard. I'm or, I'm sorry, I just don't. I think that's metric. But it's not there, here. Or not here. So it looks like they... Interrev 1. I can't tell if this is a newer version or not. I kind of wish I didn't know. Um... The instructions are from August, April 6th. So it could just be old version. Now the fun part. I've got to somehow bend these two pieces of flex cable over to these capacitors, which it's on the bottom side, thank goodness. Just trying to solder in here would suck. And I kind of... Nope, that's soldered in. I wish I could take this bottom... this bottom connector out so the board would lay flat on the table. There. Oh, boy. The camera's auto-balancing. This is actually really bright. What they've got in the picture is these are folded around so they reach there. But they don't come from the factory like that. I can make that work. Alright. Now back to fast forward. Come on, focus you fac. It's actually a very good looking joint, but my camera doesn't want to focus in that tightly. Let's get the work piece back in the view. I really wish Peanut Gallery was here. Because he could be triggering the manual focus. And I wouldn't have to be using the smartphone view to do this. He also tell me when my head was in the shot. But he didn't want to come over. Okay. Not as nice a connection. But it'll do. He really likes Retroactive really likes flux, from what I can tell. Alright, it looks like the last connection on the board side of the cable, so actually the last connection on the cable, is to controller, I'll frame again, it's to controller one so that it can read the control signals, which, here, you get on this little highly reflective card, or sticker. <laughs> Excuse me. It's to let you get into the firmware and change settings. And it, the HDMI board needs some way to know that, hey, I'm getting called. So let's figure out where the heck that goes. OK. 
Okay. It looks like he wants me to bend it here. For the record, I don't like doing this. Oh. Completely out of frame. So, what I just noticed is where you're supposed to bend it. I'm trying to get a decent angle on it. He's got... Where'd my pointer go? Pointer. He's got the tabs on the side of the cable. Which I really hope show up better in post-processing. Um, so that you know where to bend the cable. Around. It's not a 90. Not as close enough. Right, now let's figure out where pin 1 is. So the control signal, if you've got, where is it? Down here. If you've got a, an NES where it's NUS dash CPU dash 01 through 05, I've got an 03. It's going to be on pin 16 of what he's calling the PIF, which is because it's out of frame. It actually says on there PIF dash NUS. And on the board, you can see on the silk screen, pin 15 is this bottom corner. So pin 16 is one up. Did not mean the Mario reference. Does he talk about how to do it? Nope. Oh, I don't really tell you how to go about getting this single connection out of frame again. How to get this single connection onto your PIF. So I'm going to improvise. What I'm doing right here is kind of like tinning a wire, making it easier to solder to. I'm putting a nice little pad there so I can just come by, hopefully, reheat it, and I've got a connection. So that. All right. So it appears I'm done with the motherboard for at least the time being. Now, we're we'll doing a little bit of work on the HDMI mod board. Right back in from the dense foam. Should not have been that hard to peel off the blue tape. But whatever. Squish it down real well. And. Out of the way. Now. The reason he's got the foam there is because there's a huge dip there. I'm honestly not sure if that's sitting on anything or not. Actually, I want to clean the hole up just a hair. Since I mostly was cutting this direction, I've got a little bit of a bow on that sidewall, which looks like the HMI port is catching on just a little bit. No big deal. Yeah, that looks much better. That was a lot better. All right. Okay, not enough. So, if you notice, the HDMI connector is just a hair above the parting line, which is right here. So I gotta grind out just a tiny bit more. Yeah. So, all you guys just missed was me grinding out a little bit, shooting a little piece of my mouth, because my mouth was open. Um, so, I highly recommend you close your mouth when you're doing that work, and a couple test fits. It's pretty much below the parting line now. 
Um, what I need to do now is apparently start reassembly. And the picture for the next step, thermal paste, is showing where to locate the large block of foam. It's going to provide down pressure on the board. It's referenced off of the shield. So, I need to put the shield back together. Okay, so shield is on. Here's the multi out. So the little block of foam goes right in there. And it's sized so it fits between the pins and the shield. I hope I don't have as much trouble getting the sticker off this one. Oh. What he's got for the ribbon cable is what's called what's known as a ZIF, or zero insertion force. The way these work, for the most part, is they've got some sort of cage or some sort of capture method. In this case, it's this little bar right here that pulls straight out. I'd recommend a pair of tweezers. Mine are all at work. It will let you grab onto both sides at once and pull it straight, instead of having to wiggle like I did. Now, I've got to get this end of the cable plugged into that, and it needs to bend around underneath. Also, most ZIF cables have some sort of harder plastic on one side so that you can put a little bit of force on them. Yeah, zero insertion force, you gotta push. And there is no good angle that I can get the camera in for this, but it's pretty easy. It's kinda like USB, it just goes in. Except unlike USB, observe this one, you don't want superposition. As it will go in upside down. It just won't work. You spend a lot of time thinking, what the hell did I do? Why is my very sensitive mod not working? As there's no mechanical connection, or no real mechanical connection between the Ultra HDMI mod and the case, you can pull it out. Not like that. You can pull a board out of the case and shove it in there. Should look something like that. Ah, uh, complete that frame. Should look something like that. It does not go all the way in. But if you look on the bottom side and you see the bare connection, you've definitely got a problem. As it is, I don't know if mine is all the way in there. So what I'm going to do is get this roughly in there. I should probably get a hot glue gun. Um, and the reason why I would recommend a hot glue gun is because right now the cable is kind of flying wild. It's going to be very hard to get a position just right inside of the shield. But for the moment, I need to get a monitor, get a controller, and get uh, wrong way, and test. The last, the last thing I want to do is put this whole contraption together and find out um, and find out that I screwed something up and I gotta go all the way back in. So I'm gonna cut the video, drag a display over here, get everything connected up, and just make sure I have a picture. Um, I might go ahead and grab a game cart and do that too, just so that I can verify both sides are working. I have not cut anything on the board, so if there is a problem, using a proper game cartridge here and a multi out here should let me verify that it still works. So I'll be back in a couple minutes while I get that set up and I'll probably be a different camera view again. Alright. So I'm right behind the camera right now. I've got a TV set up because I don't want to have a problem when it's just because I forgot or because I'm using an HDMI and a VGA converter for my uh, computer monitors. So, I've already verified the, pack, the PSU at least didn't explode. Um, if I do have to use a game for something, I've got my copy of Turok, which, if I remember, I have actually at least verified works. So, let's turn it on. All right. So, let's get back to where I need to be.
be very crappy angle. Uh, light bulb. There we go. All right. This is why I want to leave the cover off. Open. Because it means... that I don't have to take apart as much to get into it. So, what I did see was there was a very small LED right here. It flashed for half a second right when I turned it on. Actually, let's show you guys that. Light off. Yeah, you just see that flash and I actually heard the TV pop like you got a speaker input for a second. Alright, so obviously problem. Come on. PSG doesn't like come out. Good thing. Usually. Okay. That yeah, looks a little crappy but not too bad. I'm checking the obvious things first, which is I screwed up a solder connection. Next thing on my list of oops is that I probably didn't get this zip connection made. It's more than that. I may have to do it in a multimeter and a no scope. Okay. Well, I'm over two right now. My understanding is I should be able to flip over to coax, or not coax, component at any time. So let's try just booting this up straight up normal like. Uh, this thing. If anything happens, I'll switch you over to the TV because it should stay for a second. All right, I don't know if you guys are noticing, but the HDMI board is showing red. However, I still don't have a signal. I'm going to grab another game in case it's Turok. Alright, so, just finished putting it back together. I did figure out, I had a couple bad connections which were a little spotty apparently for most of the games. However, Super Mario 64 and Madden, after I got the rest of my collection working, still refused to work. Ended up just being dirty contacts. If you can tell, that's yellow, way more yellow than it should be, and there's kind of like a liquid mark there. The back is all kinds of disgusting, and the top is kind of brown. It apparently got soaked in something by the original owner. And no matter what I try to do internally on the N64, it would not work. But the only way you can tell it's modded is if you look right at the multi-out and the fact that I still have no idea why, but I could not get the multi-out to work. However, as I've also stated, I don't give a freak flip because part of the entire reason I did this was I don't really need a multi-out and my 4K TV doesn't really like it. But I'm actually curious. I'm going to give it one more whirl. Is, it would be kind of nice if it still worked, just mostly for old time's sake. Right, we have power on, and nothing. Oh, we have multi out. Awesome. So the multi-out works. Cool. I honestly have no idea what I did. Really, really awkward. HDMI plug-in. We didn't lose HDMI signal there. Let's flip it over to HDMI 1. We still have it. Awesome. And strangely enough, that actually looks worse. Yeah. 
I handle on this TV takes to flip. Ah, okay. There is something in the instructions about the unsupported output. Um, I really don't care. I'm also pretty sure that it was for something else. All right, so that was Perfect Dark. Yeah. Super Mario 64, which I was trying to use as a test game, and it would not work. Is that in there? I think that's in there. Super Mario 64. She works. All right. It ended up mostly being some bad connections on my part. It was really hard to see. My lighting was bad. Yeah, it's an excuse. I really don't care. Um, I'm not going to be surprised if this fails. Yep, it failed. Alright. It seems to be something with when the HDMI clicks in. Or not. I... Not a huge deal for me either way. Yeah, I just did exactly what they started saying with this generation not to do. I may have to go back there soon and replace the cart connector because it's feeling a little me. Alright, and then Majora's Mask. I'm still running multi out. Let's see if it works. Holy failure, okay? I may also go back in. There is an addition to this mod. Might help if I put it in the right mode. That gives me the ability to actually trigger a reset from most situations on through the controller. Which I admit I'm kind of tempted. One unfortunate thing about the way they do this since they're not actually grabbing control is um, when I'm going through the menu it's changing the game and direct mode flips it back to 480 I think it's actually how I would fix it um, for the multi out but again I don't really give a crap no she's found So, saving settings, because I like 1080. Now to start editing. Um, I'm going to say thanks to Retroactive for making the mod, and Game Tech for selling it. Um, well, that's kind of interesting. Oh, you guys can see it. Down in the bottom left corner, it's actually giving some information. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Because, well, honestly, what this console is natively capable of outputting through the multi-out is dying standards. I mean, on the, this TV doesn't even have a discrete composite. It's a composite slash component. I'm just glad it's done and Starfox works. See you guys in the next one.